any armed attack on Philippine forces, aircraft, or public vessels in the South China Sea would trigger mutual defense obligations under Article 4 of our Mutual Defense Treaty. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo promises intervention if Philippines is attacked amid China's reported militarization in the West Philippine Sea. Malacanang supports President Rodrigo Duterte's statement that there is no proof on the alleged Marcos's hidden wealth. And water concessionaires Manila Water and Manila to cut down rates beginning this April 1. Good evening. U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo and the Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary Chodoro Loxin Jr. Tackled today, the two countries' cooperation in fighting terrorism and illegal drug trade. Meanwhile, the Foreign Affairs Secretary said there is no need to review or amend the Mutual Defense Treaty. Nel Maribohok tells us why. United States Secretary of State Michael Pompeo and Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. held a bilateral meeting at the DFA office in Pasay City today. The two officials' agenda included America's commitment to support the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP modernization program and the two nations' cooperation in fighting terrorism and illegal drug trade. They also agreed to further strengthen economic relations between the U.S. and the Philippines by continuous negotiations on the free trade agreement. The U.S. Secretary of State also assured his country's support to the Philippines on the West Philippine Sea issue under the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty. Under the accord, the Philippines and the USA will support each other in case either country is under attack by an external party in the Pacific region. China's island building and military activities in the South China Sea threaten your sovereignty, security, and therefore economic livelihood, as well as that of the United States. As the South China Sea is part of the Pacific, any armed attack on Philippine forces, aircraft, or public vessels in the South China Sea would trigger mutual defense obligations under Article 4 of our Mutual Defense Treaty. During the meeting, Foreign Affairs Secretary Loxin said that in his opinion, the idea of reviewing the 68-year-old Mutual Defense Treaty is not needed. In vagueness lies the best deterrence. I don't believe that um, going down into the details is the way the sincerity of the American commitment will be shown. They will respond depending on the circumstances. It can be noted that in 2018, Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana directed the review of the agreement. Malacanang, on the other hand, still wants to pursue the said review despite America's assurance. I'm sure the Secretary of Defense Lorenzana would want to review despite the pronouncement. Because there, there may be some kinks in that treaty that need to be clarified. So I think there's still a need to review. Despite the policy statement, we will have to evaluate. After the bilateral meeting, the U.S. Secretary of State met with business leaders of the country. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo explains the statement he made, particularly the tit-for-tat approach on the deportation of illegal Chinese workers. This after the Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Zhao Jinhua, refuted his statement that China will do the same if the Philippines deports Chinese illegal workers not in accordance with the law or procedures. But Secretary Panelo said that he is not referring to the Philippine government. Sinasabi ko, it was not in reference to the Philippine government. We were discussing academically what a government will do as a natural consequence of what another government is doing. Like we were saying, if a, a government's nationals are expelled, not in accordance with law, meaning to say recklessly, then the natural reaction of another government subject with those subject nationals will necessarily retaliate and apply a tip for that policy. Malacanang supports President Duterte's statement that the court has yet to prove the Marcos family had amassed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of ill-gotten wealth. Rosalie Cos explains why. 
Malacanang explains President Rodrigo Duterte's recent controversial statement of expressing doubts about the alleged ill-gotten wealth of the Marcos family. The palace said the chief executive is referring to the reported $400 billion worth of ill-gotten wealth of the Marcoses. This amount, Panelo said, is questionable since the Philippines did not have such amount of money during the term of former President Ferdinand Marcos. The point I'm saying is, since we didn't have that kind of money at the time, and Jaime Laya is saying that intak ang gold bars, eh mukhang baka yung akusasyon na nagnakaw sila, eh hindi pa napuprobahan sa parte yun. Na nagnakaw with, re with respect to the, gold if bars. you're saying you stole from me 400 billion dollars and I have only 1 billion, how in heaven's name can you be stealing from me when I don't have that kind of money? Parang yun ang, yun ang dating. It was in 2003 when the Supreme Court awarded to the Philippine government former President Marcos and his wife Imelda 658 million U.S. dollars with bank deposits because of their failure to justify the legal nature of the acquisition of the said assets. Secretary Panelo, meanwhile, clarified that Duterte administration does not oppose the court's decision, particularly the ones which have determined and proven the ill-gotten assets of the Marcoses. What the Supreme Court says is the law. And whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. So the answer is uh, forced yes. Not forced yes, but... <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lawyer kami. Oh. So pag kami, yan ang napatunayan, o di you have to agree to that. Mm -hmm. Kung magatalo ka, mali yung kulang yung bidensya mo. Eh. You should bow to the majesty of the law. As of 2017, the Presidential Commission on Good Government has recovered 171 billion pesos worth of ill-gotten wealth of the Marcos family, which is only part of the alleged 530 billion pesos amount allegedly stolen from the state coffer. More than 200 cases related to the Marcos's wealth are pending in courts. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Martial law victims are optimists of receiving another batch of reparation from their class suit against former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos. A group of human rights victims are also thankful of the extension given to those who have not yet received claims from the Philippine government. Ray Palayo explains why. Human rights victims during the term of former President Ferdinand Marcos in the country now have ample time for their claims. This after President Rodrigo Duterte approved yesterday the resolution that extends the distribution of compensation for human rights victims until December 2019. The Samahan ng mga ex-detainees laban sa detensyon at aresto or SELDA said that there is still 234 million peso left from the 10 billion peso fund the Philippine government has allotted for the reparation. SELDA estimates that there are around 170 claimants from the 11,000 applicants approved by the Human Rights Victims Claims Board. Yung mga grantee noon, ano, uh, may mga kulang pa talagang mga documents daw. Uh, so, hinabol nung, nung iba yung mga kulang na document, document. The Commission on Human Rights is now drafting the procedure of distribution. Selda, however, is expecting that they would receive another amount if the U.S. federal court favors them on the class suit they had filed against the Marcoses. The group estimates 7,500 claimants may receive around 75,000 pesos each from the $13.37 million worth of paintings believed to be among the Marcoses' properties. But prior to this, the victims had already received a huge amount from the properties previously sequestered. Itawag ngayon doon, Marcos Estate, eh. yun yung inihabla namin eh, sa Hawaii. At nagkaroon niya ng favorable decision ng Court of U.S. Federal District of Port Hawaii na kami ay ma-award ng 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. Na bahagi, so ting, ting, tingin namin, bahagi yun ng walang panggagalingan yun kung hindi yung, yung kanilang ill-gotten well. CELDA is an organization of political prisoners and former political detainees in the country founded on December 4, 1984. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. 
The Manila Regional Trial Court Branch 46 on Friday deferred the arraignment of new site Raptors Chief Executive Officer Maria Ressa on her cyber libel case until a motion they have filed to quash the case has been resolved. Ressa personally attended the hearing this morning with her legal team, led by former Supreme Court spokesperson Attorney Tudorte and Attorney Shel Jokno. The court has ordered the Department of Justice to comment within 15 days on Ressa's motion, which questions the charge sheet against the accused and urges the court to dismiss the case. The court moved the arraignment to April 12. Manila Water and Mainilad will implement a water rate rollback on April 1, but a consumer group believes the rollback is not enough. Here's Grace Gossin to tell us why. Ederlinda Singson keeps on saving water to lessen their monthly expenses. They're paying nearly 2,000 pesos monthly for their water bill. Yung pinag, ano ako na, sinaing, iipon ko yun, yun ang pinapang dilig ko. Today, Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System or MWSS announced that there will be a water rate reduction effective in April. Manila Water will cut down their water rates for 23 centavos while 5 centavos for Maynilad. Manila Water consumer expect 1 peso and 21 centavos to 5 pesos and 49 centavos reduction on their monthly bill for every 10 to 30 cubic meters water consumption every month while 20 centavos to 1 peso and 54 centavos for Manila customers. According to MWSS Chief Regulator Patrick T, the water rate adjustment is due to the Foreign Currency Differential Adjustment or FDA that is connected to the loans of Manila and Manila Water in dollar and in yen. He adds that the Philippine economy is improving for the past three months and the peso traded stronger than U.S. dollar and Japanese yen. If the economy keeps on improving, then we expect a further rollbacks. But for Ederlinda, the rollback is not enough as prices of basic commodities continue to increase. Siyempre, mas masaya kami. Kaya lang, siyempre, minimal ang dating doon sa amin. Okay lang kung ano, tuloy-tuloy siya. Yun lang. Sa, sa mahal lang bilihin. Hindi mo halos maramdaman yun. Even the United Filipino Consumer and Commuters Group are not satisfied with the water rate adjustment. Maliit lamang po. Itong i-refund -re nila na sinasabi nila, gatiting lang ito dun sa mga bilyong nakolekta nila sa atin. But MWSS advises public to conserve water since the effects of El Nino are now being felt. Use a basin when washing dishes and vegetables. Use a dipper in watering plants. And close the faucet properly. If water leaks and illegal water connections are noticed, immediately inform Manila Water and Manilad through their hotline. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A Chinese man has realized his childhood dream of owning an aircraft. Abby Valdez tells us why. Aviation fan Zhu Ye is making his dream come true with his hands. Together with five of his friends, Zhu is creating a full-size aircraft model which is now attracting visitors from all over China. The project, which began in 2016, is installed with a complete power and control system. The apron of the model aircraft is the yard of a factory in northeast China's Liaoning province. The lead builder of the model said that this replica of an Airbus A320 is named Dream, as owning an aircraft has been his dream. I've liked aircraft since I was a child, but I could not afford them, so I went to junkyards to find usable parts and make my own planes with mud and plastic. From a simple drawing to today's plane, it has taken them over two years, using more than 80 tons of steel and costing nearly 3 million yuan or nearly 400,000 US dollars. As the dream is close to final completion, Despite several setbacks, Zhu has opened it to the public, wishing to share his joy with everyone. I was afraid and anxious when I was on a real plane for the first time, and I was so scared I couldn't see clearly. This experience is a lot better. <laughs> Zhu's dream is not completely fulfilled yet. He hopes that one day in the future, the dream will really fly so that more people will be able to experience flight on it. 
Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. The Department of Justice finds probable cause to charge former Health Secretary Janet Garin and several others other over Deng Vaksha related deaths. And Australia develops a floating rubbish bin to help clean up the oceans. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with William Theo after this quick break. I'm Brina Villamore Camera. Good evening. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. The Department of Justice finds probable cause to file charges against former Health Secretary Janet Garin and several others for the death of children linked to the controversial Deng Vaksha vaccine. There are many more illness and deaths that could occur without vaccination. A health expert warns that infectious diseases may spread again once the immunization rate in the country drops. And Manila Bay Task Force begins removing silt and trash that have accumulated underwater over the years. The Department of Justice or DOH indicts Health Secretary Janet Garin and several others in connection with the Dengvaksha controversy. Secretary Francisco Duque III, meanwhile, has was cleared of charges. My Bermudez will tell us why. The Department of Justice or DOJ has found probable cause to indict former Health Secretary Janet Garin and several others over the deaths of children inoculated with Deng Vaksha. The DOJ recommended charging reckless imprudence resulting to homicide against them. This as the prosecution panel discovered irregularities in the purchase of Deng Vaksha. In its resolution, the DOJ found out that when the vaccine was purchased, it was not yet included on the list of the Philippine National Drug Formulary or PNDF. Under the Republic Act 9502 or the Universally Accessible Cheaper and Quality Medicines Act of 2008, the purchase of medicines which are not included on the PNDF list is prohibited. The DOJ panel also found out that Ingvaxia did not undergo complete clinical trial when it was purchased and before it was used in the government's mass immunization program then. Sanofi Pasteur executives were also recommended to be indicted over their failure to monitor the use of the vaccine. In a message former Health Secretary Janet Garin sent, she stated that she respects the investigation panel's decision, adding she worries over the effects of the findings on the present government's mass immunization program. She also called to stop politicizing the country's vaccination program and focus on saving lives instead. Charges against Secretary Francisco Duque III and the Vaxha distributor Zuelig Pharma, however, were dismissed due to lack of evidence. The DOH still waits for the official copy of the resolution and has yet to comment on the issue. It can be recalled that the issuance of the said resolution to the first batch of complaints had been postponed. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Infectious diseases like polio may spread again once the immunization coverage in the country drops again. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Vaccine saves five lives every 60 seconds worldwide. Vaccines have prevented an estimated 2.5 million deaths globally each year. But according to a group of doctors, there has been a significant drop in the immunization coverage in the country. In 2015, the immunization coverage in the Philippines was at 93%, but the rate dropped to 32% in 2018. According to Dr. Lulu Bravo of the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, this is dangerous because infectious diseases that had been eliminated before, like polio, might spread anew. There's so much risk that it's stopping the deaths. Please, make sure that you are able to distinguish between risk, benefit, and of course, the value of this communication that there are many more illness and deaths that could occur without vaccination. The child immunization schedule contains 13 vaccinations that should be given from 0 to 18 years of age. These include anti-tuberculosis vaccine and anti-hepatitis B vaccine given to children right after birth. The schedule also covers vaccine that can protect children from diphtheria, tetanus, 
polio, influenza, Japanese encephalitis, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, and measles. With a drop of the immunization coverage in the country, there has been a measles outbreak in several parts of the country. This is the reason why the Philippine Pediatric Society, Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, and Philippine Foundation for Vaccination calls to implement immunization against measles for children who are 6 months old for the child immunization schedule this year. Dr. Anna Ong Lim, the president of the Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, pointed out the measles vaccine in the Philippines has been proven safe for 40 years. Walang dapat uh, ikabahala yung mga magulang na uh, magkakaroon ng problema yung mga batang babakunahan. So the six-month uh, recommendation is always an outbreak-based recommendation. The doctor added, vaccines should not just be given to infants but also to children one year and above, especially those without protection against measles. Children must be given two doses of the anti-measles vaccine with a measles outbreak in some parts of the country. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte has vetoed the anti-spanking bill. But if experts will be asked, is it good to spank children? Mon Hoxon has this report. Recently, President Duterte vetoed the anti-palo bill. The president said he believes that children must be protected, but he does not agree in prohibiting giving corporal punishment as a form of discipline. Based on data from the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund or UNICEF, close to 300 million children aged 2 to 4 or 3 out of 4 children experience violent discipline by their caregivers on a regular basis. Physical punishment is defined as shaking the child, hitting, slapping, spanking, and beating. According to both UNICEF and the Global Initiative to End All Corporal Punishment of Children, there are 60 countries, states, and territories that have adopted legislation that fully prohibit using corporal punishment of children. Michelle Eden, on the other hand, has been living in New Zealand with her family for almost two years. New Zealand is among the countries that prohibit corporal punishment. According to Dr. Sheila Viesca, a psychologist, based on studies, there are times when spanking is good and there are times when it is bad. Ang uh, pagpapataw ng parusa gamit ng uh, pagpalo po ay hindi mabuti kung ang magulang ay wala sa sarili tulad ng galit o kaya takot o may malakas na emosyon na nararamdaman. Pero hindi natin pwede tahatin ang pagpalo sa bata. Kasi pag ang, uh, ang magulang nasa katinuan at nasa tama, may mga pagkakataon na gusto mong magpaakala sa bata. Pero yun yung mga pamamalo na hindi naman maglalatay ng, uh, ng trauma sa bata. Dr. Viesca said it is important to let children realize why there is a need to discipline them. And parents must also know the reason for doing it. Kung basta ka na lang mamamalo na hindi, hindi mo alam yung mga, yung mga repercussions ito, huwag kang mamalo, lalo na sa bata. Kaya maglalata yan ng, uh, ng uh, trauma or akla-ala na masyado silang, uh, masyado silang sinaktan. Yung disiplina pala, kailangan masaktan ka muna bago ka, bago ka matuto. Dr. Viesca pointed out, however, that spanking is not the best way to discipline a child. Open communication is necessary ngayon. Ang mga mula ngayon, uh, According to televangelist Brother Eli Soriano of Members Church of God International, the Bible says it is not wrong to discipline a child once in a while. Sabi ng Biblia, huwag mong ipagkait ang saway sa bata. Sapagkat kung hampasin mo siya ng pamalo, siya hindi naman mamamatay. Hampasin mo siya ng pamalo at ililigtas mo ang kanyang kaluluwa sa kamatayan. Yun ang sabi ng Biblia. So, ang kailangan sa bata, lalo na kung minor, 
eh, disiplinahin, ipakilala mong magulang ka, hindi mo itatakwil. Kahit gano kaswail yan, idisiplinahin mo yan. At baka may pag-asang yan ay magbago sa tulong ng Diyos. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The National Capital Region has the highest number of drug-related homicide cases under investigation in the country. Meanwhile, the PNP Internal Affairs Service warns policemen may be sanctioned for unresolved cases. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. The National Capital Region has recorded the highest number of drug-related homicide cases under investigation or HCUI in the country. This is based on data from the Philippine National Police Internal Affairs Service or PNP-IAS. PNP-IAS records show that over 27,000 cases of HCUI were recorded from July 2016 to December 2018. Of this number, over 4,800 or 17% are drug-related homicide incidents. More than 2,400 incidents were recorded in NCR, 570 in Central Luzon, and 484 in Calabar Zone. Pag sinabi natin drug-related, so ito yung lumabas sa investigasyon na ang namatay ay user o user, ganon, suspected. Itong uh, may mga placard, yung huwag makontalaran dahil ad adik ako. Meanwhile, PNPIS Inspector General Attorney Alfegar Triambolo said they conducted an internal audit to check the performance of police officers on the investigation of HCUI cases. Kung ilan na yung nasa korte, ilan na yung sa piskalya, so ilan pa lang yung nasa police, no? So, o sa other law enforcement. So, titingnan natin kung umusog po yung kaso o hindi. Kaya natin pinaudit yung mga folder para malaman natin kung meron silang follow-up investigation o kung pinapatulog na lang nila. Based on PNPIS data, the ARMM has the highest number of resolved cases or 80%, while only 10% of cases have been resolved in the NCR and Calabar Zone. Ibig sabihin, identified kung sino yung... Uh, Pumatay dito sa mga tinatabi nating mga tao na namatay na may related sa droga. So dito, wala po yung police po kahit sa isa. No? Wala pong police silang na-involved. Na no? Pero ito, patuloy pa din nating inimbestigan. Attorney Triambolo warns that policemen may be held accountable for unresolved cases. Pipili po natin silang kakasuhan ng neglect of duty sapagkat yun po yung primary duty ng, uh, ng ating law enforcer, especially sa police, na to investigate crime. The police official added there are several reasons why authorities are having difficulty in resolving some cases. The suspect is, is still unidentified. The victim's family do not cooperate or are not interested in the case. The place of incident does not have CCTV. No progress, lack of possible witness, lack or no evidence available, and lack of identification of the victim. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways begins today the soft dredging of Manila Bay. Joe Ainano tells us why. As the government continues its effort to rehabilitate Manila Bay, the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH began today the soft dredging operations along Sector 1 of the Manila Bay. DPWH Bureau of Equipment Director Noel Ilo said that it is just a soft operation in preparation for the much extensive dredging operations in the coming weeks. Our purpose and goal uh, in, the, uh, in that part of Manila Bay is to remove the unwanted sediments which contains dissolved solids that may be toxic or unsafe. These amphibious trucks drew thick mud and decades-old garbage from underwater. The agency will also use a waste segregator that will separate the garbage from the sand collected from the murky seabed. Dredging is not as simple as that, but there are various processes must be done. The scope of dredging is within a 200-meter stretch from the shoreline of Manila Bay, which is estimated to be 1.5 kilometers wide from the Manila Yacht Club to the U.S. Embassy. The DPWH divided the area into five sectors. The dredging in each portion may last for three months depending on various factors. Pang malaking factor dyan, 
yung weather. Pagpasok ng June, at ang alam naman natin hanggang December, medyo malakas ang alon sa Manila Bay. So magiging malaking factor sa operations natin yun. The Philippine Army also conducted a cleanup drive in Las Piñas Paranaque Critical Habitat and Ecotourism Area or Lapapacheya, which is also a part of Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Stained glass windows have adorned old Havana's buildings for centuries. But as of late, the bright colored glass windows are having a sort of a renaissance with tourists admiring them and conservationists pushing to preserve them. Here's why from Nina Armilio. Stained glass or vitriol can be found in all kinds of buildings in Cuba, including apartment buildings and storefronts. The intricate pieces of art have even found themselves on the tourist beat, with visitors from around the world spending a sunny afternoon to admire them. Stained glass artists Adriana de la Nuez and Irena Martinez lead weekly tours around Old Havana to show the centuries-old pieces of art to tourists. We use a technique or specialized work that is not common in Cuba. There is always a client who is interested in restoring one or creating one. It is hard though because we don't make glass in Cuba, so it has to be imported. Nila Nuez and Martinez are not the only ones on the island who appreciate the historic vitrales. A specialist from the Museum of Colonial Art, Indira Carrillo, said the stained glass windows are a unique part of Cuba's architectural history. They are part of our typical architecture, our colonial architecture. They distinguish us, make us unique and structures we should not spend. Nina Armillo, UNTV, News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. By voting against this resolution, some members of this council continue to shield Maduro and his cronies and prolong the suffering of the Venezuelan people. The U.S. The US and Russia fail in rival bids to get the U.N. Security Council to take action on Venezuela. And an Australian developed floating rubbish bins helps in cleaning up oceans. White News will be right back after this quick break.